Here we are for a behind the scenes podcast with some sort of video accompaniment for Beyond Believability, Fact or False, which was the guaranteed video love letter parody of Unsolved Mysteries, hosted by Robert Stack. <laughs> no. I'm joined by my friends. Ryan Murphy. Neil Ciceriga. We took a long time to make this video. We've been talking about making a parody of Beyond Belief since like a year and a half ago. We mentioned it I, on a podcast. It, yeah, it came up. It uh, showed up on uh, Amazon Prime and uh, you showed me it because I never saw it as a kid. Really? Uh, I don't think so. It was oh, something man. I just... Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't. I wasn't a Star Trek guy. I didn't sure. have the built-in Jonathan Frakes interest. I think you should probably reiterate because you made a joke about this being based on unsolved mysteries. A lot of people <laughs> have probably never seen this Jonathan Frakes show. Stop what you're doing. Watch an episode, but don't watch the episode. Just skim through it to when Jonathan Frakes talks and the last five minutes of the episode where they do a recap. That's of, the money. That's the yeah. money. It's so fucking funny. Dick Clark produced it. It ran for five, was it what you've discovered this, Ryan, like five years or something? Like, I want to say maybe even seven. It Jesus. went no. way further than... Well, that's the Aren't thing. Aren't there only three seasons? No, there's more. There's I three four? with Frakes, and there's like one with uh, Josh Brolin. The first season or is Josh Brolin. Um, <laughs> is it really Josh no, Brolin? No, it's his dad. Uh, <laughs> what, James Brolin. James Brolin. But that's from right. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Frakes wasn't the original host. But they got him post Star Trek Next Generation. Frakes was the backup. <laughs> he was, but he's so much better than um uh, than uh, Brolin, who's just a uh, kind of a washed up movie star at that point. Yeah. Whereas Frakes was never a movie star, and he looks so happy to be on this show. It's great. <laughs> it we we've been talking forever about doing something with it, and then literally the week we filmed mm -hmm. the first segment, we had written the script, we had lucked out, we had got this great location in Weymouth. My friend Corey Tilton, who's in the movie, he, his father has like this warehouse. He leases out like rental space for like construction equipment. Mm -hmm. He hit us up and going, hey, I'm going to have some empty space here for a week. If you guys want to film anything, we go, oh, we have just the script. A warehouse. You bet your ass yeah. we're showing we'll up there. We'll film something cool there. <laughs> we go to film there. And literally that week, the universe conspired and suddenly beyond belief was in the zeitgeist. It yeah. had never had been before. Ever. I don't know what happened. Well, there was a guy. I actually, if you find the original Twitter post where uh, I think is, I forget his Twitter name on YouTube. He's Winter Moot. I wanted to mm -hmm. give him a, a, a shout out. But uh, he did this, um, like a super cut of Jonathan Frakes. All the uh, all the times the stories turn out to be a, a false story. So You're it's wrong. Just, yeah, it's just no him way, doing Jose. That. It's out. You know, it's like not he, a chance. It's it's Jonathan Frakes gaslighting you. My, for... my, yeah, my friends Brooke and John immediately said this should just be called Jonathan Fra Jonathan Frakes gaslights the. Yeah, earth. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you find that Twitter post under it, it, there's a reply from me saying like, I wish there was one where he just said it's bullshit. Uh, so that's where that joke in this video comes from. Was <laughs> I was I I thought of it well. Well, so that video did partially inspire at least one joke in this video, but we'd yeah. actually been writing it before. In light of the fact that we noticed that Beyond Belief is now on Amazon Prime, which meant we could watch the whole thing and see these ridiculous endings, because we would do that. We would just fast forward to the end of the episode the and last go, five minutes. this is the best part. Yeah. Because yeah. it's an hour long show minus commercials. It's, it was a long show. Yeah. Uh, Clearly, someone else went, hang on, hang on a second. There's something really ridiculous here. And more importantly... There's a lot to be said that Jonathan Frakes is more famous from Star Trek The Next Generation. This is clearly the next gig. Shout out to Gargoyles. <laughs> Any, shout out to the Gargoyles fans out there's there. nothing wrong with Gargoyles. Love Gargoyles. But yeah, right, Also, else he went, directed Clock Stoppers. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so we knew... We, we went into this going, how, where on the scale of parody satire? Like, are, are they just so ridiculous? Like, that's the joke? But we want... No. We wanted them to be kind of the level of ridiculous that these stories actually were it's such a hard joke to hit whenever you do like a, a farce of something that's already funny mm -hmm. it's it's a real tightrope you gotta walk there because if you're just gonna be like oh it's bad it's not enough um but we wanted to hit the style on the nose to our best ability like you know we we pulled out all the stops in terms of lighting and smoke and stuff i mean realistically there's only ever three or four of us on set right like that first bit with ryan hosting we like spent like like five hours probably. But for the rest of it, you know, I, I, I edited this one and I shot, I shot the whole thing. I put a lot of attention into, okay, I'm going to get the gamma right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get the color right. It's going to be just soft enough. We're going to crop it four, three. Even that was a big decision. Oh yeah. It was, like yeah. it's got to look like an old, it's got to look like the show. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what's the point? 
you know, once we got like a minute into the whole bit after the swear jars, it's like, okay, now that we've established the context, like, no, this is a dead on parody. Now we're off to the races. Now we can do our jokes, you know, yeah. we kind of do crazier stuff. Like when Ryan does the toad man and he eats the orange. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that orange eating joke on my joke list for years. That's just like the blink in uh, GameCube controller. Mm -hmm. It's just been sitting there. I'm like, oh, I got to put this in something. Let's buy some oranges so Ryan can eat an orange while he's talking <laughs> casually about the toad. It, wor it works for this, though, because we actually, if anything, I think um, we underdid the props because Jonathan Frakes has many props on that show. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> The, the bike, he, the bike one's weird. I always forget each each episode opens with him um, showing you an optical illusion. Oh my god! And they're usually pretty bad. They're for children. But in ours, we didn't do the optical illusion. But Ryan, at one point, when he was on, Mike goes, "Hey, wait a minute! I have a globe in my car. Mm -hmm. I can just go get it." And like it, it, that, and like barking up the wrong tree for the grave digger, complete non sequiturs. Yeah, yeah it's about. <laughs> It the, the skit is about a skeleton in the back of the truck, and I open it with, "Am I holding a skull, like a plastic skull, which I also had in my car?" Oh yeah, because that was it. We wanted. We were like, "Oh, does anyone own a pickaxe or a shovel?" And we're like, "We forgot to bring one." Or no, no one had one. This prop like, is unrelated to the skit. <laughs> like, do I like spin the globe and go like point to like Thailand? Like, nope, nothing oh, to man, do we with. Should've, we should have done that. Ryan should have spun the globe and like pointed, and then we should have cut to an extreme close up that was like it's like like Australia silhouette, but it just said across it graveyard. Yes, <laughs> I'd love it if Australia changed their name to graveyard, <laughs> like that, legally, like oh yeah, if under trees one day just Australia things? decided we are the goth nation <laughs> of the world. All right, I feel like let's get back on top. Yeah, okay, <laughs> skit number one. The swears in the jars. Mm -hmm. This was Kevin's baby. This yeah. is Kevin's brainchild. Neil didn't want me to write it in. So like I Well, like, it's sort of uh it, it is sort of um it's a different skit idea that is has been kind of um we kind of patched it into this. It, it's yeah. Well, 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 the way we usually write scripts is very much like a TV show writers room. We'll, we'll, we'll all have ideas, and we'll they'll end up like in a notepad or or a Google Doc, and then one of us will take it and consolidate it, and make it into a story. And for this one, it was like, okay, we need a handful of short stories. We did all like eight of them. I don't think we threw out any of them. Yeah. Um, no, that's not true. I, um, what was the one we threw out? Uh, it'll come to me later. But, but uh, Oh, well, I, I say it, but uh, we'll get to the... Okay, yeah, okay. Was it worth Grandma's typewriter? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. We'll get there, ladies and but, gentlemen. But the swear jar one was when I had... I came up with that one recently. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, why don't we open with the swear jar one? We need to open with like kind of a longer story, and they'll get faster and shorter. And Neil, you were worried. You're like, no, no, no. That could like work. That's like its own like idea. I'm like, yeah, but we're not going to make... We're not going to make it, right? Like that's, right. that's always going to be whenever we get together to pitch the next script, it's always going to be like, okay, what's funnier than the swear jar idea? And we're going to come up with something better. It's yeah. always going to be the second one. Right. Yeah. No, it's good that we found like a way to, to put it somewhere. My concern was just that, uh, oh, it's kind of got its own um, three-act structure to it, and none of the other skits really do. It doesn't feel like an abridged version of a story. Yeah, it's, yeah. it actually has a little bit too much context. But I think in the end, we ended up like stripping it down to the bare essentials. I cut out some stuff. I, yeah. shot, I shot that whole thing in five hours with my friend uh, Kevin Lowney and his his, his buddy Denise. Uh, they both do local theater acting. Kevin Lowney's acted in stuff for me and for us before. Uh, he's wonderful. Uh, he totally got it. Mm -hmm. he, they did all that in one take. Like they didn't need any coaching. They just got the joke. And like I said, but we yeah. were reviewing for the footage before they both feel like the kinds of actors that would have been on beyond been on beyond belief. Yeah. And they look like when some casting director has to do like, yeah, the show where like my dog is haunted of, I need a, a man who kind of looks like this, but better looking. I need a woman who looks like this, but better looking. Idealized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, mm -hmm. the, and they, they look and feel the deliveries are fantastic and yeah, they yeah. feel like the types of actors who would have been on that show. This is a slight, uh, slightly off topic, but I remember, uh, I think when we originally started watching beyond belief, I remarked that, Holy shit. Usually with this kind of show, you'd expect there to be at least like one famous person, you know, like a Gilbert Gottfried or someone who went on to become famous. And I couldn't yeah. find anyone. <laughs> yeah. But Not I did. I found an episode with a celebrity in I'm it. I'm listening. It's Rip Taylor. Yeah. What? I've heard of this There's one. one with Rip Taylor. He plays like an old like guy selling stuff Sardo. or something. Sardo, basically. Yeah, well, I don't know. He's like a traveling salesman or something. And like, 
he's a ghost or he remembers <laughs> like someone's past life. I don't know. But it's yeah, it's Rip Taylor. <laughs> or he marries a mummy. <laughs> of, of, I guess, prop comedy fame. I don't know. He's... <laughs> What, anyway. what, what, but um, the thing about Beyond Belief, speaking of like scripts that you may never get to adapt, mm-hmm. is a lot of Beyond Belief is transparently pitches for episodes of other shows. It's kind of a backdoor shitty Twilight Zone. Like, okay, like this didn't make it onto like um, the Outer Limits, the one that was going on at the time. But, yeah, in the 90s. Uh, make it a three minute version and throw it on Beyond Belief. That, yeah. That's where that one can go. Even in X Files. Like, this is yes. a little too hammy to put Mulder and Scully in. Like, this is. A lot of them feel dumb. like Amazing Stories episodes. Uh, amazing yeah. Story. Yeah. Ripley's Believe It or amazing Not. Stories. Again, uh, these are even like, hey, this is like, uh, this isn't even good enough for unsolved mysteries. Throw it on Beyond or Belief. Rescue 911, which I guess is nonfiction. Can we talk for a minute how, about how dumb a title Amazing Stories is? I know. I was just thinking of that. It's like, like calling it good well, movie. Movie. Mr. Spielberg, <laughs> what would you like to? Sh- <laughs> I don't know, it's just like, I don't know. I, I don't think people are gonna watch this. They're gonna think it's like a little too, uh, you know, low rent. Con- you know, considering the Spielberg. No, no, no. We'll trick them into thinking it's good. <laughs> they're amazed. They're yeah. all amazing. They're above and beyond. We'll call it a stunning TV. No, no, no. Have you ever watched that show? No, never. I've seen the intro. I've seen the episode with Weird Al in it. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Second story in our anthology was... The Peanut butter sandwich. Yes. That's my jam. Yes. We had to come up with these puns for all the titles, and the worst one is, unfortunately, the first one, The Flask of Fear. Yeah. We, I needed. I, went, I looked up a, on a thesaurus, like, synonyms for jars. <laughs> and you couldn't use Mason, because we want to use that for Mason around. Yeah, we had to save that. Yeah, so we had, like, a little, we had a little, like, pitch session where we all just thought of, like, basically just... Easy, quick stuff we could shoot. Half of mine were just single shots. I like came up with like kitchen. the mailman yeah. getting attacked by mail, stuff like that. I used to work for the post office, so I had a postman's uniform laying yes. around. <laughs> Thrifty filmmaking. Yeah. We knew we wanted to make an anthology, and we were like, all right, some of them we're going to sink our teeth into, and some of them are, yeah, like, like some of them are the one, joke is two shots. Yeah, the joke is how quick it's over. <laughs> like sourcing footage for the Jurassic Park mm-hmm. one. But, yep. but, but with the, the PB&J one. All right, so, something I love about the peanut butter and jelly yeah. one. Number one, the fact that I ended with a reference to fluff, <laughs> like the fluff you'd put in a sandwich, even though it's not about a peanut butter and fluff sandwich. There's no fluff. We're already breaking the rules. Exactly. I was concerned because fluff is New England. It's a New England thing. Um, and I worry that a lot of people wouldn't know what you meant. It'd be like calling a soda a tonic. It, right. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? That's like a New England grandma thing. Right. It, that, that's something else. And I know we keep trying to do the individual segments, but we're talking about the broad strokes here. But the, the New England lore we want to do for this one. Yes. The PB&J one's a good example of it because in almost every skit, there's like a little bit of like New England seasoning there. I don't know how that happened. It I, well, it's kinda, intentional. Yeah. I, I I decided to do it when I came. I originally, it was supposed to be. But you had me doing it. I didn't. Really, I had like a Bobby Orr joke. No, that, that yeah, I yeah. Well, because well, originally, I we talked about it being on Sci Fi Channel because there's uh-huh. like a little bug in the corner, the Fox Twenty Five bug. And originally, for a while, it was Sci Fi Channel, and then I thought we can have more fun if it's Fox Twenty Five. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not which, gonna, which is a local New England affiliate of Fox. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, because I want, it gave me a little more direction. Because when I started editing it, I remember like in a panic, I would text you guys. This happened like three times. I was like, I don't know what the hell this is. I don't know how to make this beyond believability thing work. Mm-hmm. It, it was like kind of directionless <laughs> to me. So anytime I could find something that kind of made the whole thing belong together, I went for it. And the the, the Boston angle, uh, once I realized, okay, we'll open on like a local Fox broadcast like bumper for like millennium or mm-hmm. x-files so i found one from like millennium <laughs> and i put the bug in the corner and i said okay the whole thing's gonna have a bit of this like boston steer to it so yeah bobby Orr, like that you're watching it's like filmed like it's 1998 you're looking at a very modern laptop and it's showing a mm-hmm. hockey game from like 1980 or something yeah <laughs> It's yeah, it's the Stanley Cup where Bobby Orr famously does that jump, you know, the still photo in which you say five points, which is not <laughs> yeah, we're not hockey people. I think everyone I hope oh, that you joke caught lands. you caught my mistake. We were also watching like hockey. one of the most famous moments in sports history, like it's new to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, casually. Casually making a PB and J and like you we did another take where in the script it says you go, Yeah, go Bledsky. Bledsky <laughs> <laughs> the New England shit. Yeah, there's the flop. There's there. There's the 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 Fox Twenty Five bug. There's the the the, the list of uh, people who provided equipment during the credits at the end. The credits are the most dense amount of like Boston mythology. Yeah, it's all like defunct bit Boston or New England businesses. Oh yeah, Building Nineteen. Br- you got a Bradley's in there. Bradley's Leech Mayor. Yeah. 
Did and Ocean I, State get in there? Yeah, get, wait, get, between our group messages and Google Docs, it's a great way of us to sharing and collaborating. We aren't literally in the same room. And yeah, at one afternoon, Kevin pitched like, hey, I'm trying to think of some fun pseudonyms beyond like shtick shtick look. And I'm like, oh, Albert DeSalvo. Like, who's that? I don't, that's not ring a bell. Like, <laughs> don't oh. look it up. <laughs> <laughs> don't look it up. All the, uh, all the credits at the end, there's like one page of fake credits, one page of real credits. But the fake credits are fun. Like one of them is like an anagram for D- Daxter Flaxter. Oh, yeah. Um, we didn't get F. Lee Bailey in there, did we? But we he's could, We could still put it in. <laughs> that's <laughs> not, right. The video is not public yet. After PB and J, what else? What's next? Next one is the uh, the the clock, right? No, the, yeah, the clock. Yeah, we rearranged them last minute, so the clock is next. Okay, so the forgive clock. us, ladies and gentlemen at home. We do know our video, but it's been a couple <laughs> of runs. I promise. Yeah, yeah. The, that clock I found at a like a church yard sale, <laughs> and I actually posted it to Twitter right away because I've never been so like how weird this clock amused is. by a clock. Yeah. It's a, I, I totally thought it was like a digital, like red LED segmented uh, numbers clock. And then I looked at it more closely and I realized, oh, these don't light up. These are just printed in kind of a day glow orange. Yeah. And they don't turn on and off. Like they the click little, over. They, they slide down. Right. Because they're on little pieces of rotating tape. So it looks like a digital clock, but it's not for some reason. <laughs> yeah. It's, the clock itself is almost the joke. Uh, but it's such a weird clock and, but, um, you're right. It's not like the beginning of Groundhog's day where like the numbers click over from top to bottom. It's your, yeah, they're long strips of, there's no reason for it to be that font at all. It's like you want to, it's like if you were like a bachelor in the eighties and you want to convince single women that came over that you had more money than you did. Apparently like, that's exactly what I got it a was. digital clock. Yeah. Cause digital <laughs> clocks with that, that cheap display that we take for granted now, like your stove over here I'm looking at. Yeah. Uh, those were kind of a luxury item back in the seventies. Why do you, we? Ca- I consciously framed in another clock in the background, <laughs> which doesn't a, tell the same time. Is that? I wonder if that hurts the joke. No, oh no, I like I it. It's, it's also it's also a little odd because um, th- both that and the PB and J are shot in my kitchen, mm-hmm. and you can see the background of the previous uh, skit in. With that in mind, shot. a lot of these stories bridge into the next one. There's like some like. That's all element. like kind of synchronicity. Though, there's too, like the right? there's like the jars. There's and then two PB jars, and J, yeah. And then the PB and J into the clock, mm-hmm. and then I don't know. I'm the, the mailman. The following. They're both one. super short ones, I guess. Maybe, but the uh, the one other thing about the the clock bit was last minute when it shows like the recap image where it says like fact or fiction. Yeah, I thought it'd be really funny. <laughs> So I did it. It took like five minutes. I went to Photoshop and I took a frame of the clock at twelve thirty four, and it made it read twelve thirty five. I don't think anyone's going to catch this. I always catch it. Did it you have make, to like steal that five from? Did you I had to like this? take like parts of the layout and like rotate it and copy. It doesn't look that good, but wow. I just thought it'd be really funny to imply that in the full episode of Beyond Believability, that skit was at least one minute long <laughs> yeah. of the camera. Just <laughs> watching the clock <laughs> for another 60 seconds. Originally, it was a picture of Mark Wahlberg from Max Payne, the movie, <laughs> screaming, because we wanted, because Ryan, you came up with the idea that the clock bit's called the Witch Doctor's Curse. The Witch Doctor's oh, yeah. Curse. <laughs> and I went like, I don't want anything involving witch doctors or that old stupid song by the Alvin and the Chipmunks guy or any of that crap. Like, the Witch Doctor's Curse evokes so much imagery. Good, bad, racist, totally PC, kid friendly. But this has, like, the, race, the Witch Doctor's Curse can be a lot of things but it can't be boring it is not watching paint dry <laughs> watching a clock click Which, in like also, the doctor's waiting room clocks do that twice a day and i love that <laughs> this is one of the ones that we picked to be a false story it's no way possible it's impossible <laughs> So what's after that? The mailman. The mail. Then we get no, the mailman. Yeah. Kevin um, had a, a, a stint, a, not a stint. It was quite some time. He was a letter carrier. He worked yeah. for the United States Post Office. It was a, a really hard job. Um, Thankless, difficult job. Of honestly, mostly junk. Just because of the, I was I was working in Brockton, Massachusetts, for the post office, and it was a really rough job. I actually think it's a really good job if you're in a if you're in a better managed office. But there's mm-hmm. one supervisor that was awful and. I, I just after a few months I just couldn't do it anymore. I mean, but um, I had an extra uniform. I think that's where Neil came up with the idea. Like, what if a mailman got attacked by his own mail? Mm-hmm. Because it really, I don't know if it was intentional, but it definitely feels like an artistic, therapeutic cleanse for me. 
to like because yeah. I stopped doing the post office thing recently, and to cut from like just to see me screaming with mail coming at me, <laughs> like it's I don't know, it felt like a good way to like exhale and move away from that job. <laughs> and again, we've never moved past the day. Like we are resourceful people. We use our resources. Mm-hmm. If Kevin has a letter carrier jacket, <laughs> we're going to use it because you're not going to wear it as a civilian. All right. You don't want that jacket. No. It was really, we so like, we just, you came over and that's the perfect, uh, that's the perfect shot to do down in the suburbs where there's not a lot of attention, but we did it up in the city. Yep. Uh, we just went around the corner, found a, uh, mailbox. a mailbox and it was actually, it was a kind of a quiet day. Only like one or two people walked past us. Just a little too windy. Cause you, you were like, like yeah. ma- using masking tape to tape letters to me. Yeah. And after like the fourth one, it was just Neil and I, I they was kept like, listen, falling off they're going to keep falling. We can CG some of this. We yeah. can com- composite in. And you did that in after effects real fast. Like I did that the day of, and then I forgot I had done that. So when you <laughs> sent me the clip a few weeks later, I complimented like you, I was like, Oh, those letters look really good. Yeah. And then I like later that night mm. realized like oh right. <laughs> I did that. okay the, the, well I mean they they still look good the, the, I, good the, job the me bit yeah, came out pretty, the bit came out pretty funny God that that outfit I can still like remember how it felt wearing it because it was so hot that day yeah uh, oh one other note is um, there's a classic Kevin James scream going on in that shot. And it's not you. It's actually a stock scream I found it's that not, just sounded a it, lot like it's not a Wilhelm scream, but it is. It's the Howie. No, 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 no. It's not a. It's not one of the famous two. It's one we've screams. used a few times, and we slowed it down a little bit, and I like EQ'd it to sound a little more like me. I do scream a lot in our videos, <laughs> and I do have like a like a scream I can do. But I was not going to do that <laughs> at a busy street corner in Somerville with cars driving by dressed yeah, as well, a mailman. We're, we're actively like throwing litter, and it's getting in people's yards and scr- <laughs> fucking around with U.S. property. It's yeah. just like one too many. This things, might so. be a federal crime. So I just <laughs> I just had you like open your mouth and you mimed it, and it works. You know, you know, I'm picturing it now as that really specific scream when Nedry gets the gunk in his eyes in Jurassic Park. <laughs> the Dilophosaurus gets you know the, the sticky spit of. But like, you're like that's definitely not Kevin James. So that's not <laughs> there uh there's a website now it's like a wiki for sound effects that like highlights here's cartoons and stuff this sound effect has been used mm-hmm. in this didn't exist a few years ago it would have awesome. been so useful for us but like now it's just it's really easy to like figure out like oh where's this one you've heard it a million times where does this come yeah, from yeah where does the exact library? where does the sound effect of the ghost trap closing and in real ghostbusters usually there's around. a yeah. passably uh, like a passable quality version you can download that's great linked on the website so that's like that's pretty nice so after finding screams after the mailman one do we go into Ascar? is Ascar the next one Ascar stars rocky who is my girlfriend hillary's brother and he's awesome and he just came over after work he works construction and uh he, he gets it he, he got, got the it joke uh we filmed that with our friend cory tilton and cory provided two really cool pickup trucks for this video cory loves restoring old trucks and vans and i just he, i said hey do you have a cool truck we could use and he's like how about we use my matte black one it looks yes. more like something out of like a stephen king movie it looks like the car 1977 yeah. with yep. james brolin oh <laughs> very nice and yes. uh when rocky rocky God, we, we started filming on this street in Weymouth, Massachusetts, and all he had to do was drive the truck by, and then Rocky had to like look confused and then say, ass? And even that was too much for the people of Weymouth. Um, some people in the neighborhood were taking pictures of us, and not in a fun, jovial way, in a very kind of hostile, I'm going to call the I'm cops. I'm going to call the cops kind of way, because we, we so were making- a camera. It, yeah, because we had a camera. The license plate didn't even say ass on it. We CG'd that. I, yeah. I, I did that After Effects Kevin yeah, put later. a ton of time in it trying to get the motion track. Like, again, the second shot looks a little iffy. It's really hard. Shout out really, to the yeah. city of Weymouth for having like these awful, bumpy roads <laughs> with there are just a patch job over another patch I job. just yeah. printed yeah. out like a piece of paper that looked like it, and no one would have known. <laughs> I should have just taped it on, right? I, no, I think it'll be like i think you're gonna like give people a little bit of a relief when if they notice that the second one's fake they're like okay they didn't really get an ass but so we we had to shoot the rest of it rocky's just like line deliveries and this like reaction in -hmm. like my driveway you can't tell the difference but uh we so you weren't even yelling the word we weren't even yelling no we we, that was adr so we could get the microphone placement better without the wind Mm -hmm. and i went we came back to my apartment rocky Corey, and i and i showed rocky this very specific scene from the second Silent Hill game. <laughs> where it's I love Silent Hill too, but there's some real bad voice acting in this one scene where someone goes, lost. <laughs> and I said, can you just say it like that? Say the word ass like that. And Rocky nailed it in one take. 
And he's like, and then I showed him the ADR and he got it. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's the funniest part of the video is his read of ass. Really? It's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And then we go into, (laughs) for what little we learn of this character, first he says, ass, as if incredulously. And then we get straight into Pee Wee Herman, large Marge territory. (laughs) But ass died. It's not ass as a profanity. It's ass was a person. And I knew him or her, <laughs> but ass died five years ago. Rocky knew a guy with a plate yeah. that said ass. ass. Oh, he had all the high scores at the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> the ride came up with ass died uh, five years ago. Yeah. And I was like, okay, good. We need something. Cause like, I was worried that these were going to be like one joke per skit, which nothing. makes sense yeah. in your head. Mm-hmm. But then the act of watching a seven minute movie with only seven jokes. It could have been five minutes if we, if we did <laughs> and any discipline. Real, yeah. Um, <laughs> Then we have the Jurassic Park. Jurassic bit. Park, yes. I pitch like the TV guide depiction of what I guess would be, or like like the book sleeve cover of what is the story about, as if it's new to uh, as yeah. if it's new to anybody. Anybody. And then we cut to the delightful footage of yeah of Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum, but we don't. They're not actually seeing the famous T Rex shot. The most probably the most popular and important special effect shot in movie history. Mm-hmm. Like more, I think more beloved than like king kong or like whatever i like or terminator 2 like that scene with that t-rex is like the most iconic special effects sequence in movie history maybe the uh the trench run from star wars but maybe yeah yeah but this looks real and it's 1993 cg it's incredible yeah like it's the awesome. rain and everything and then we cut the footage from carnosaur <laughs> i hope a- people get that and that we're not like making them not want to watch Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park, Jurassic Park is it, fantastic. It it is, we all yes. love Jurassic Park, but in, <laughs> well, we had to edit this down. So, so the, in the original joke that you didn't see, uh, Goldblum is you know is like like you know like is reacting to uh, the T Rex from Carnosaur. Mm-hmm. I think it's a T Rex. Uh, Sam Neill's freaking out, and it cuts back one more time to the Carnosaur, and it's like eating the guy he just picked up. I assume the Carnosaur is a male, and. <laughs> an arm just kind of falls out of his mouth. Like a human arm just falls like out of the dinosaur's mouth and hits the ground. It looks yeah. so fake and so <laughs> stupid. And I put in like kind of like a plop sound effect, like yeah. a funk. And Neil vetoed that. He's like, listen, this is like, it's just a little too gruesome for me. It's a little too mouth soundy violent. I thought it was like the, the arm has some weight to it. I think I, you, you call it cheesy, but I, I felt like, Maybe oh. going going from like the super fake looking dinosaur to like some dismemberment was, I mean it's not it's not too gross for me, but I thought like for the rest of the video and like what people are expecting at this point, yeah, throwing that like even that little bit of gore in there when like in the next scene we have like a fake plastic skeleton, it just like felt a little not, bit too much for and not, this not video. To, and not to um go off too long about Carnosaur, but yeah. that is like the defining thing about the Carnosaur dinosaurs because that movie was. Made was, during dinosaur fever when it Jurassic was timed Park, to come out right before Jurassic Park, it, and they they put a lot of blood and goo around the the, the, the teeth mm-hmm. of the, the the dinosaurs in that movie to make to make it more of like a slasher film. And it does it is iconic. Like uh, that movie's not good. I, I saw it once as a kid, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but looking through footage of it for our video, I can. It's not a good movie, but it is that that ghastly nature that look of it it, it is creepy it isn't selling cuz you're so used to dinosaurs for some reason not having any blood in their mouth after they violently eat something yeah you know you're just not that that is a little i i, I could see that being a hairy uh, slope like oh this is getting a little yeah. too yeah but the other the other reason i suggested that we cut that out is just because Showing the dinosaur bite the guy and then cutting back to Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum. That's a perfect point to that's end the, the screen. That's yeah. The, yeah. They're just like, uh. <laughs> Carnosaur is such a weird creation because it's right around like the gremlins, critters type of. It's a Roger, if, it's a Roger Corman exactly, thing, Exactly. Right? It would have never come out. This That movie would have been about some kind of other monster. It would never be about a dinosaur unless Jurassic Park just came out. It's not about a dinosaur. It's about a carnosaur thank you <laughs> okay what's left the the heartbroken grave digger yes <laughs> now were, i open yeah. this with in my character's narration again because it's not me <laughs> allegedly that uh the careless grave digger which i i really I'm, I'm so glad we got to keep that in there because 
by being a careless grave digger, dig, by being a careless grave digger, it implies that it's his fault. He didn't do something. This is his comeuppance. Wait, yes. Sh- wait, should we? Should, it's titled "Heartbroken Grave Digger." It is. Should but, I change it to "Careless"? No, no. I say "Careless Grave oh, okay, Digger," okay, and the title yeah. of the project is yeah. the story, "The Heartless." Oh, okay. I mean, the, the, the heartbroken. I mean, you can if you want to. If you think it's, it's funnier, such, it's such marble mouth. Like. No, no. Keep both. Keep because the, yeah. he's heartbroken and careless, and it's still his fault. That, that's of course Corey. <laughs> Tilton, um, yes. in one of his other cool trucks, we went over to the graveyard in Weymouth. Um, we waited until no one was there grieving, and we took. You that saw a guy come by, right? You visit like, his like dead wife. Oh, yeah. yeah, and we we were just like we didn't we made sure no one saw our skeleton because <laughs> we were like this is so goofy to us. But yeah, there's people coming here to like visit dead people. <laughs> it's an act of semi. It's not like we go to like the top of Burial Hill in Plymouth. Like they died before the Revolutionary War. This is a spooky. So like, yeah. no, no, an active cemetery yeah, is a place people, where people. Yeah, this is the kind of situation. I wasn't here for this, but yeah. I could easily see this. Like some like fireman comes by and like chews you out like you're 15 years old. Yeah, like, and you deserve it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want that to happen. We were, we were really yeah. quick about it. We like um, use some clamps and tape. It, it looks really cheap. Ryan has this skeleton. Now my, my <laughs> I will say my skeleton when I first got him because having a full-size skeleton is a prop of it's absolutely worth keeping in my wheelhouse oh, yeah. when i first got him i need him steve bannon because it just felt right mm-hmm. he need a name and he, i need him steve but he's definitely rodney now and he's oh, yeah. rodney because we put the googly eyes on him to play rodney, rodney dangerfield, dangerfield. <laughs> and he was also mr bones for a little while <laughs> yeah we, we've talked about doing a horror anthology film for like two years Mm -hmm. film like a short one that was a joke was like it's too short to be a horror anthology but we're gonna make a horror anthology and this was the one we went with for some reason the beyond belief context yeah it just kind of came together yeah right good timing i wonder if people are gonna think we're ambulance chasing i truly think i don't think it's a big enough meme (laughs) some of them have like there's like a few of them now and some of them have yeah. like hundreds of thousands of hits. And... Yeah. Yeah. There's a few super cuts of beyond belief now and they're all super entertaining. I don't want to like, you're right. Yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, if you need, if you need your fix and you don't have seven minutes, <laughs> watch those instead of our video. <laughs> um, if, you, if you're already, but honestly, upset. that's the kind of like old media centric meme where I totally don't mind if people think that we're just kind of like, throwing throwing our hat into the ring right on the that details, yeah. even though we you know it, we've been cooking this one for a little while it just kind of like it just happened to line up the with stars you know. aligned we yeah got, we we the memes of jonathan frakes and this came about the same some people started watching it on amazon prime the same time we did mm-hmm. i mean so yeah it's, i think we, t- we i remember we were talking about like should we do a podcast about the show like nah someone else is doing a podcast already. yeah 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 so um, Where we like place bets every episode yeah. and see who got the most right and wrong. It's complete nonsense. It's like, yeah, it's really, it, it's a show that's like tailor made to just have a resurgence 20 years later and have all these edits yeah. and podcasts. It's Drake's just like, doesn't talk about it on Twitter. He's yeah. got a lot of Twitter followers and he never posts about Beyond Belief. It, I'm sure it's not a big part of his life. I wonder if he'll notice this. I wonder if he sees it. Um, God, I hope so. Let's all try and if you're listening to this, just uh, tweet the link at him. Try bother and get him. it. Yeah, just bother him a little. It's just Twitter. It's not really bothering him. <laughs> it's just text. It's fine. We we uh, there wasn't anything really complicated other than the skeleton for the grave digger skit. Corey did a really good job. We uh, we yeah we uh, <laughs> you mount- find funny. It's I, funny. I, it was just my t- yeah the way I. Uh, I even tried storyboarding it, but I always imagined the skeleton clinging to the side of the car, yeah, like a nightmare at twenty thousand feet, just yeah. like the wind blowing, just like ah, ha, 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 it's just, just like, too, too hard for. T- it was just Corey and I, so it was yeah. just a little too difficult for us to do. And I didn't want to scratch up his car. Yeah, and we, I, I did have like a good mount for. I threw one of my cameras on the front of the hood of the truck. I, I it, it's some good. That's getting more than any other looks just like Beyond Belief. Yes. Yeah. It really has to look. it was an overcast day. Mm-hmm. The, the car is period appropriate. The setting is period appropriate. Yeah. Like yeah. You, like there's you said, one Neil, actor. There, yeah. There's one actor. That I, I, I went back and looked at a lot of Beyond Belief and noticed there's a lot of camera drifting in that show. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of like camera operators like getting a tripod set up and then following the action. There's not a lot of lock offs. There's not a lot of... Uh, painterly compositions on that show no so i tried to do that a few times like we're like there's just unnecessary camera f- you know the camera following the action yeah versus just like you know like statics and then uh toad man uh the tail i this was a uh, pure ryan's this is me yes all right so when we first 
pitch before we shot the scene obviously before i shot the scenes where i narrate these things we had to write them so we created if it's a google docs right we, we started talking about it in the group message Just but we came up with a google it. docs of like pitch your crazy things and i came up with a couple of ridiculous you know the like a mad lips the x with the y in it mm-hmm. or the b in which something is an A. And then I came up with just this insane, convoluted, non weird location, Ukraine, weird animal, uh, badger, snake, toad, toad, and weird context. Is it like a radiation thing? Is it a Soviet thing? Chernobyl thing? Doesn't doesn't matter. I, I love I love the idea of it. It's like kind of like a folk tale you'd read in like scary stories to tell in the dark or something like that. But then you end it with Oh no, everyone heard about this. It was on the news. <laughs> yes. Like it would be. No, this actually faced uh, you know, journalistic scrutiny. It'd be a big <laughs> fucking deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just I pitch it like it's like it's like the ninety eight Olympics. Like of course it was I mean yeah. there was actually forgive me, I don't even know if there were Olympics that year, but like it would be like if I said the summer Olympics, like of course you know. Everyone yeah. knows. <laughs> and which Kevin, you brought up before of <laughs> there was when we were brainstorming, we were actually working together compiling the finished draft of the script. Yeah. At one point, though I never say it on camera in the yeah. warehouse, I do I did at one point just say, Of course it's not real. What are you stupid? <laughs> I wish that what, only an there. idiot would think that's true. <laughs> oh you <a> dumbass. <laughs> what an idiot. <sighs> just oh, joylessly. Before we forget, um, Let's talk about the little lights, the interstitials, the uh, oh, scene transitions. Yeah. yeah, this is great. I went on and, and I bought these two like DJ lights, real cheap mm-hmm. online. And we came back to my apartment, put some tape over the smoke alarm in my apartment. We shut all the doors to like kind of like vacuum seal the room. Took a smoke machine, filled the room with smoke. Mm-hmm. Ryan and Neil each took one of these DJ lights, and then I turned to the camera sideways so like the ceiling was to the left the floor was to the right and you guys just kind of waved the lights around cutting through because we had to match like that like kind of effect lighting yeah they do the spotlight stuff on the show like if you watch the video you're probably thinking like oh they just like found a stock footage clip we could have done that for free but i wanted to spend 70 dollars in half an hour i thought it was worth it i love that we have that like if, if it looks lit- cool. If I literally tilted the camera up like a foot, you'd just see Ryan and Neil like holding their breath, trying not to be on camera, yeah. waving the lights around. It looks like a machine's doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think the imagery on the show is supposed to be spotlights like through the dark and the fog, looking for the truth. It works as a simple <laughs> interstitial, it is. just to like show. It's almost like those dumb things the some the segues and who wants to be a millionaire where all the stage lights like turn in a circle or all they go 90 degrees yeah. just to prove like just to prove there's a guy at the technician board who can control the lights yeah and like done and done and time to move on he earned his day rate yeah yeah uh what else is there to say well at the end we need oh, to prove yeah. that i'm not printing pornography oh that's right it's really a whole impl- other story i feel like i should get that on the story, record which was not one of the original ideas we had. I think no. we came up with this while we were like pitching some <laughs> extra stuff to pad the video out. It, well, the video, I, 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 I was hanging out with you, Neil, and I was like, we need something to tie this whole thing together. Like, we need more. There's nothing that, like, it can't just be like word vomit and it ends. Like, it needs to, like, that's where, like, the Boston stuff came from. Yeah. And you were like, well, what if we, like, could we incorporate the host into a story somehow? And then you immediately were like, oh, it can't be like a Me Too thing. That's too, like, awful. We, what, if, yeah. what if he's just like a loser? <laughs> we tried to think, like, what is, like, the most family-friendly thing that's really not okay to do? Yeah. Like, that you would get in trouble for and that you... Uh, a would, shameful it, misdemeanor. Un- <laughs> a shameful. That an unscrupulous person would try to d- deny using the platform of his Fox TV show. <laughs> so it turns... Yeah, it's all just a ruse for my fake Jonathan Frakes to... to uh, not alleviate, to um, emancipate, to to claim <laughs> what to 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 exonerate, to yes. exonerate yeah. himself, and he's <laughs> he's using the um, the like, public public library, a very nineties thing. He's it's, abusing the trust that people have in Beyond Belief. Like yeah. he thinks if he just states it, like what, the best part of that, Ryan, you had an improv where you just go, not fact. <laughs> <laughs> we, we shot that at, at a library in Weymouth and we went over. They were really nice. They were and super we friendly. Did, we, we did we, not mention the exact specifics of like. Well, because we're in our mid 30s. We can't like just like sneak in, shoot it and run out. Like we're too like 
arrestable. So yeah. we like walked up and we like explained to them like, so we're making this comedy video. It's going to be on YouTube at guaranteedvideo.com if you want to see it. And it's about this guy. He's being a weirdo and he's printing stuff out of the library and he gets asked to leave. And they're like, oh, that sounds funny. Go for it. Yeah. We didn't tell them what he was printing. It's not sure really porn. Guess. It's not. We. It's a it's picture of Sarah not. Michelle Geller. Where that was shirt. a fun session. Yeah. Like I have a it's fold from the waist up. It's just yeah. It's just what? a stock photo of Sarah Michelle Geller that would have been yeah. I'm gonna say ninety five, ninety six. Probably was a wallpaper for a lot of people back yep. then. We, we. I noticed that yeah. You had um. You shared the uh, Dropbox folder with me, and I was looking at it, and there's just a folder there called porn. Yep. And I had a moment of like, uh oh, do I need to tell Kevin? Oh no, it's just <laughs> <laughs> no, no. These are prod. These are okay. work really. This is we, prop porn. We spent like we spent like half an hour, Ryan, Neil, and I like brainstorming. Like, okay, what's like the perfect picture? And was, I was it like, Jennifer Love Hewitt? Was it going to be um, Shane Melissa, Elizabeth? What's her name? Uh, Melissa Joan Hart. Yeah, yeah, All like three names. Who's like the perfect like one? And like Ethel Bailey. No. <laughs> yeah, Bailey. And like uh, I, Ryan suggested Sarah Michelle Gellar. I was like, oh yeah, that's the winner. Like, there's like no one better than like the girl from the American Pie movies. Jen Elizabeth was Jen Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the Sarah, Mich- Sarah Michelle Gellar one was perfect because like. It's, it's even a joke in a uh, Weird Al song all about the Pennians. Remember? Oh, it's that's just, true. Like, it's a Weird Al. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was like a, yeah, good enough. We, one we even like met, mucked it up to make it look more like it, it was printed on a dot matrix printer. <laughs> if Weird Al can sing about it, it's not that taboo. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that, uh, we also did a little uh, Neil. No. You photoshopped it, and I after effects it. The uh, the Jim Varney Library. Yep. <laughs> so the building across the street from the library we filmed in looked way more like a library, and we're like, "All right, we're here. This frames well. We can make this work." Right. Well, it was the funny right story. The, the library that we went to, I think it was a temporary library. We looked up uh, what the closest <laughs> library were, was, and we're like, I'm not sure if it's open or not. I'm kind of getting a mixed so message. We drove from there, the and it's a hole in the ground. It's just a hole in the ground. It was gone. Just completely they had just knocked it down. It was literally dirt, like a hole, like a cavernous hole with construction workers. If, so we if took if out memory, our phones. And, if memory serves me, there was literally a lady wearing a blazer look, with two construction workers, like <laughs> pointing to some sort of designs, like a blueprint that aren't yeah. actually, they were literally like plotting out. So we'll do this and dig the, it was actively being built. <laughs> now that we've knocked down the library and it's not here yeah. anymore, we have to make a new one. <laughs> we get there and there's like three other cars with filmmakers in them, just like throwing their hands up. They're like, ah, oh, damn it. I think I even joked like, like out the window, like, Hey, uh, is the library going to be finished today? Or <laughs> So yeah, we, we went to the other library and we walked out and yeah, the youth center across the street looked way more like a library. But what's the name of the library? Oh we, yeah, we, we photoshopped oh, yeah, yeah. on the J Varney library yeah. and uh, I don't know, it was a nod to uh, the Did wonderful you, actor. Did you catch the other sign I put under it where it says like, you must have a library card to enter? Yeah. <laughs> It's not free. No. <laughs> also, you can't even get in without the card. <laughs> the, the scanner will stop you. Yeah. How, how do you get a library card? The RMV. The RMV. <laughs> that's all. Man, that's the that's the fucking hell universe. If libraries still exist in ten years, that's how it's gonna work. You're gonna have to go to the RMV to. You're get gonna it. have to have a car and a li- or a license to get a library yeah, card. Yeah, it's hundred dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I think we're running out of things to talk about. We already talked about the credits. Um, any other factoids? Anything we're forgetting? I'll throw some. Oh, co- the uh, speaking of the credits, we didn't mention it, but uh, half of the names are Skip Schoolnick, which is the actual name of like the like the head honcho behind Beyond Belief. Yeah, he, like, we got that name from wrote, the show. His name a is real name. Skip School Nick. Actual name, not a <laughs> <Yep>. pseudonym, because <laughs> it really looks like a pseudonym. Doesn't why it? Are, not- why are like TV like longstanding TV producers all have that name? Like there's Dick Wolf from um from a uh, yeah. from that Law and Order, Order. Speedweed also that guy. <laughs> yeah, Clark. I forgot that one. <laughs> well, Dick Clark, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I feel Dick like that's Clark. just like either if you're gonna become a TV producer, you need to pick a, like a short weird name. So that's people memorable. read your scripts. They go, "What the guy's name? Skip Schoolnick. He yeah. must be a genius." <laughs> So is there anything about the framing device, the filming of that, that was interesting? Because we spent the whole night in that that warehouse filling it up with smoke. We just had two of like the regular cheap smoke machines. $30 smoke machines. And it actually filled up the entire... Oh, we, we paid for the fog juice and the lights we used with patron money. Thank we you again. Not, <laughs> I just want to talk about how amazing those fog machines are because we, did not, we didn't even use like a quarter of the, the tank. And um, the space was huge. And the it, space it was worked. huge. It was two connecting, yeah. like thirty foot ceiling rooms. The only thing I would have done different um, would have been to have like a prop or two in the background, like like a like a globe or like a I don't know, like something bronze. Well, we, and then a jib. I would have liked a jib to come down. It wasn't one to one because Beyond Belief takes place in some sort of parlor 
It's yeah. got, you know, wood walls where, and desks where, and it's stuff. It's where Mensa members get together to solve mysteries. <laughs> it's, it's definitely Jonathan Frake's um, private uh, investigation office that's filled with smoke. In the woods. Yeah. Uh, whereas we just have a warehouse that has the roughly the same color palette. For boats. <laughs> yeah. And we, we, we scattered a few candles yeah. on the ground. We did have a discussion about, will the LED fake candles or real candles, which will play better? We went with real candles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they're cheaper. <laughs> they are. That's about it, though, right? That's like, I think we've turned over everything for beyond believability, fact or false. Yeah. Oh, we have um, the the final narration we can talk a little bit about. Oh, me doing that in my closet? Like, yes. <laughs> like, just like slowing my voice down? I mean, it's, it's clearly good. me. It is, week. but the voice you're going for is, uh, what's his name? Uh, LaFontaine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Don LaFontaine, who... Um, Really good at that. Who worked on Beyond Belief, but he's more famous for doing every trailer, and he passed away. They couldn't afford him after, like, the first two seasons. They got, like, some cheaper voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, he's he's part of the, the fabric of that show. And then it ends with another found clip you, you had from the local news. Yes, to make it feel like Fox 25. I found an old Fox 25 broadcast from, like, 98, 99. And, yeah, I just, like, I wanted the whole video to feel like it's, like, 9.52 on a Thursday night. Yep. TV's about to get boring. Mm-hmm. Like it's, we're about to like like the last trickle of like fun beyond belief before it cuts into the local news. And when I was going through the local news broadcast, that opening line, that remark, "Oh, this story's ending," may surprise you. It echoed a little too well of the beyond belief like surprise factor. Yeah, <laughs> it just it just married really well to it. It was it was just good luck that I found that. Well, I like I like that we have those like um those bookends on this video because we don't usually do found footage in our stuff. We usually try to have everything kind of be tailor made. Mm -hmm. Um, Bespoke. Yeah. Bespoke. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. And, um, but uh, the videos I make are often, you know, abusing, uh, you know, other people's (laughs) footage. So I like that, uh, that you, uh, you went ahead and stuck those in there because uh, they add a little bit of a wild card feeling to the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, I think I think it gives a good context. I keep using that word. Like, oh, this feels like this now it feels like a like a vertical slice of time. Mm-hmm. But I guess that's it, right? Yeah. I, I'm happy with how this one came out. There was a lot of production with a lot of other people behind the scenes here. Yeah. Yeah. And if anything, it's more fun to talk about than watch, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I think it's funny. I've I it's hard it's hard to gauge now that it's finished, but I found myself laughing and giggling uh, along several points, like when I read your script originally, when I saw the first cut. I hope people like it. It is it is a strange video. It's like seven minutes. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. We, we it, talked for a minute. Should we just like break this up and upload each skit to Twitter or Instagram? Right. Like it's a weird package. Well, we'll see. Uh, in, a, in a few days, we'll post this all up online and uh, I hope people like it. I think they will. Thank you for your support over at GuaranteedVideo.com. Oh, yeah. We love making these little behind-the-scenes uh, podcasts. They're a good uh, exercise in vanity to talk about our hard work. It's not just vanity. I think it's also <laughs> what I like about these, even if no one listens to this podcast, it's uh, it's kind of like a production diary. We're, we're kind of like, these are a lot of little details that we might forget if we tried to talk about. When I go senile in 20 years, I can <laughs> listen to these like, oh, yeah, to, I worked with yeah. Corey. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so so I do actually like doing these uh, these like post mortems and just kind of like getting all our thoughts down and just like, and also it's interesting to like know and step back and think about all the all the little fine detail work that goes into making a a video like this. Yeah, there is a lot of like little uh, like scrappy things we had to do to to make it work the way we wanted to, and you know, that's fun to document. Sure, sure. All righty, I all guess right, that's Ryan's all. giving us the thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you.